Hi, I'm Charles with PAX Instruments, and today I'm going to show you our latest prototype of the T400 temperature data logger. Let's check it out. The PAX Instruments T400 is a four channel temperature data logger. It just takes standard mini thermal couples as input. Um, it also has a micro SD card for um, saving files to just a standard CSV format. Uh, and micro USB for connecting as a serial port to your computer, but also for recharging the internal battery. So let's take a quick look at the interface and then move on to looking at the guts inside. We have a thermal couple connected to input channel one. Uh, you can see the current temperature in this field here. Um, and the label of the graph is, is channel one on this side. So you're able to uh, keep track of it as the temperature moves up and down. Uh, of course, we have our temperatures on the left side, and right now we have uh, a time base of one second. So every time uh, you see this change, it's one second, basically one second per pixel on this. Uh, we have our battery status, right now kind of a low battery. Um, we have the not logging being indicated, which means we're not currently logging to the SD card and we have an ambient temperature of 28.9 Celsius. So if we go through the different uh, parts of the interface, we have uh, backlight enabled, disable. We are able to change our time base. We have proper clicky buttons. Um, and every time you change the time base, since that uh, changes uh, how many seconds per pixel, the data gets, gets wiped from the screen and, and cleared. We're able to change the temperature uh, units, so Celsius, Fahrenheit, and of course Kelvin. We'll go back to Celsius. Um, we have our record button here, and this button will, uh, once we implement the feature, it will cycle through displaying uh, all channels, then just channel one, just channel two, just channel three, just channel four, and then back to displaying everything at once. Because uh, sometimes when you have multiple thermocouples connected, you, you really don't know exactly what is what uh, when things start changing. Um, so if we want to start logging, we just uh, set our time base, set our units. We'll do you know one measurement per second uh, in Celsius. So we'll hit record. And now it tells us what our file name is. So LD0068 and standard CSV file. Um, and what's nice in this mode, uh, you, you're unable to change the time base. You're unable to change the units. Um, and you, know, you can still change the backlight, but you cannot power the device off. So this is good to, to avoid accidents where you, know, you just hit the wrong button and end up you know, kind of messing up your data. Uh, so if you do want to you know, record in Fahrenheit, you'll have to stop recording, change your units to Fahrenheit, and then hit record again. Uh, this just makes sure that all the data within a single CSV file is the same time base and is the same units. The initial scale will be one degree per tick. And that, that will go ahead and scale as we get more data on the screen. So if we just touch the thermocouple tip, it very quickly shoots up. Let's try it with a lighter. We can see the tip glowing red. And we're measuring about a thousand Celsius. Now on the left here, you can see how, how much this is scaled. So our earlier readings are now basically just a straight line. So this is an SLA print. Uh, which is why it's white. Um, in the future, we'll have, uh, I think, a, a blue enclosure. I'm, I'm still not certain about what I'm going to go with, but I, I think blue is, is going to be pretty good. Um, so you, we're not going to have any screws in this because we can't use our threaded inserts. Uh, you know, we, we can't like thermally set them inside the plastic uh, just because this isn't plastic. It's a, a different kind of material. Um, this, however, is a, a CNC uh, part. Uh, so we could test the snap, which is pretty good. 
All right, in the final injection mold part, it'll even be uh, a bit more snappy. So you would just unscrew that. Then you have the uh, standard BL5C Nokia battery. I can pull that out. You can get these pretty much anywhere. When you get your T400, uh, it'll, it'll include one. But if you need a, a replacement, uh, you can just get this online. And let's pull that up. That's what the inside will look like. At the top, we have a, a separate top panel. Now, I did this because I want to be able to use the same enclosure for future devices. So in something else, I would just use a different top panel uh, and I can still use the same uh, injection molding tooling that I used on this enclosure. Um, also, uh, we'll be selling this enclosure independently and that slot size right there is uh, 1.6 millimeters, which is just the right size for uh, a PCB. So if you wanted to make a custom device, uh, you could just make a, a custom top panel out of PCB. So let's pop this out. Put the electronics for to the side for a moment. Um, in these four standoffs, we'll have our threaded inserts. Um, so, because I, I expect people maybe will take this apart um, over time. We also have a polycarbonate window here. Um, you can see inside this area, there's little uh, there's little pegs. Uh, in manufacturing, those will be heat stakes. So you basically have a, a flat tip soldering iron and you would push down on that and melt it and then the window would be solidly in place. I'm also This is a laser cut part. I'm also considering uh, maybe injection molding this. I'm, I'm really not sure because you know that's gonna add a lot of extra cost and uh, we'll see, it, it may or may not be worth it. Let's take a look at the electronics. We have a few things on the back. First we have the Arduino pin map so you can just reference what Arduino pins connect to uh, what networks on on the T400. So for example, digital zero is switch B, digital one is switch A. Um, we also have the I2C addresses for reference uh, for the analog digital converter, the onboard uh, you know, junction temperature sensor, and the real-time clock. We have standard ICSP header. This is for programming the bootloader and you know, interfacing with the, the spy lines. So MOSI, MISO, clock, all that. On this side, we have an extra two digital pins broken out, as well as uh, SDA and SCL for your I2C interface. And you know, all, all you do is solder on a, a standard surface mount two by three header. And but be between these two breakouts, you should be able to interface with pretty much anything you like, uh, connecting to potentially a shield you want to make um, or some other sensors. So, so that's pretty easy to interface with. This PCB was originally a version 12 PCB, but uh, for development, it was modified into version 13. So we're gonna see uh, some of the wire modifications on here, but this is basically what you can expect to see. Let's, let's flip this over and take a look. On this side, we have loads of cool stuff. Very proper, beautiful, clicky buttons. Micro SD card connector here micro USB connector and our you know, filtration and circuit protection. Um, we have the Omega 32U4 processor. Uh, this is the same thing that you would find in the Arduino Leonardo. We're running the 32U4 on an eight megahertz clock, uh, which is necessary for operating this um, at 3.3 volts. Uh, we have uh, our four thermocouple connections. These are just uh, surface mount automotive uh, blade fuse connectors, uh, which do not work in this application, so we actually had to manufacture custom connectors, uh, because unfortunately what we wanted just did not exist in the world. We have our analog to digital converter that take, measures the voltage across each of the thermocouples and uh, you know connects with the microcontroller over uh, I2C. We have our junction temperature sensor, the MCP9800. Uh, this measures the temperature of this whole area of the board, uh, our isothermal plane. Uh, we call it an isothermal plane because 
Uh, we have a ground fill all around there that's not connected to the normal ground fill in this area with the digital electronics. We have our a separate analog area. Um, we have thermal isolation slots uh, so heat doesn't transfer from the microcontroller or the battery charging circuit and uh, create a temperature gradient across this. We want uh, this temperature at this point to be the same as you know the temperature all the way over here uh, in order to be accurate. Uh, and in our testing, it, it works out quite well. The firmware uses the RTC just for uh, doing the temperature measurement interrupts. It doesn't keep track of calendar time. It just keeps track of uh, time like a stopwatch keeps track of time. But we are including the um, battery backup connector and most likely the batter backup battery itself. Uh, so if we do implement that feature in the future, uh, we'd be able to um, you know, just have the hardware capability right on the board. Uh, this is a one megabyte flash chip. Uh, we're not currently using this on the firmware, but we are going to be populating this in production. Uh, so in the future, if we have any upgrades that we want to do the firmware that requires a little extra space um, and goes beyond the limits of the 32U4, we can just tap into this, uh, maybe move our fonts over there, move our uh, thermocouple temperature table over to this, and you know, basically just make it easier for us to hack and easier for you to hack if you want to do something extra. So the LCD is uh, 132 by 64 pixels. Um, well, you're, you'll usually find LCDs uh, 128 wide, but you know, we did find one that was a little bit wider, which is cool. So we could just show you know, a handful of extra pixels. And it also works out really well for uh, displaying the four thermocouple temperatures across the top. Um, now, this was an off-the-shelf part. And what was nice is, you know, it had all the standoffs so we can uh, clip it to the board and also have enough room inside for our components to fit. Uh, an unfortunate problem is that we have this really small pin pitch, uh, 0.5 millimeters, so which it really makes it difficult to solder to the board. Um, you know, the mating connector soldering that is just, it's a nightmare. So. To help with hackability, we went with a custom connector. So this is one millimeter pin pitch. Uh, and this actually, this ends up being really great. This is super easy to solder to the PCB. So if we, we sell this uh, LCD on its own in our store, and you know if you wanna use it in your project, you can definitely uh, integrate it much easier than you could with you know a much smaller pin pitch. Um, so anyway, uh, another good thing about this is the backlight is integrated into this connector, so you don't have to solder on some extra you know, nonsense wires. Uh, it just goes right to here, and yeah, that's it. It's a really nice integrated solution. It stays on the PCB uh, on its own. You don't need extra components. Uh, so it works out really well for a project if you just wanted to you know, have only a PCB and the LCD it's gonna it's gonna stay together. We also went with uh, clicky buttons soldered directly to the board, um, rather than using uh, silicone buttons with carbon pads on the back. Um, just because we wanted the device to operate as just the PCB, rather than requiring the enclosure to work. So if you wanted to do some hacking, you could have all of this outside of the case, and uh, you know, we'd be able to maybe sell this on its own and you know, just may maybe make it a little bit cheaper for people to get. Okay, this is beautiful. I have a box with 10,000 connectors. It was quite a lot of work to do, but they're finally here. Um, I have the tooling, I have the design, it's all open source, it's all on GitHub, and you know, this is just the perfect connector for thermocouples. It's amazing. Look at that. It's just such a beautiful connector. This is all custom. Beryllium copper, the Cadillac 
of connector materials. The most perfect and beautiful thermocouple connector uh, in the world. Trust me, I, I looked, so this is definitely the best thing out there. Slides right in. I wish you could feel that, it's really super smooth, it's got a tight grip, and you know, this thing's just, it's, it's not, it's not gonna come out unless you pull it out. Really proud of that. A lot of people helped get this done. This was quite difficult. If it weren't for some wonderful friends, this, this may not have happened.